Hey guys, thank you for being so patient because we've had tech issues all over the place. Uh, and, oh, by the way, it's Paula Nutting, your musculoskeletal specialist, and I'm here for our monthly Ask Me Anything with wonderful Rob Labosco, who's an Aussie like me, but he's got a lot of extra um, irons in the fire, if you'd like to say. He's uh, got uh, skills in naturopathy and he does, runs retreats for wellness and he's kind of like got that little bit of a happiness bug but I'm going to up and it's going to be really kind of cruisy and interesting this this hour for you but kind of a little bit short but uh, as we were ch just chatting it's full moon for us right now so um, anything can happen so without further ado please enjoy the next 50 to 60 minutes with myself and Rob Labosco so Rob come on in It'd be great to to have a chat and find out what the happiness bug is all about. Hello, everyone. Happy full moon. Wow. There's a bit of buzzing going on there, Rob. I'm just kind of going, wow. But, uh, hopefully yeah. that. Oh, there it is. Better. <laughs> it I has have that been... effect. I have that effect. <laughs> it's been a wild ride the last last little while. Um, before we get started, I just want to do a quick shout out to uh, Q Academy because those guys are um, one of the one of my sponsors, which is awesome. And they are involved with education through Queensland primarily, but they're also branching out a little bit. And if you want accelerated learning techniques and to actually learn either your diploma, remedial massage or your myotherapy, it's the most fun and the quickest way that you're going to absorb that stuff. So if you want to know a little bit more about learning how to become a remedial massage therapist, myotherapist, then just jump on and have a look at what Q Academy can give you because they are fantastic. Brisbane, Sydney, Goldie, and starting to look up into regional rural areas, which is awesome. Anyway, enough about that. Rob, how are you? I'm really good. Happy full moon to everyone. It's really, really electric energy at the moment. It's um, it's a very transformative energy, which is really wonderful. So everyone's probably feeling that um, that drive to try new things, change old things for new things. So I think the energy's um, the energy's really strong this full moon. Yeah, I'm just wondering if there's a what do they call it? Mercury in retrograde because of all that stuff we've just had going on at the same time. But I don't we know. We did much have a Mercury that. in retrograde, which is actually a really good Mercury in retrograde. People don't like it because people get slowed down, but it's actually a really necessary time because it's a time for us to relook at things, and number one, relook at our health and say how am I, how am I actually feeling, but then. It's a good time for you to look back at, on all your intentions that you set at the start of the year. And it gives you time to re-look at them and say, mm, I like the way that's going, but I actually want to fine tune some of my intentions and not do it that way. I'm, I've got a bit of time where you've got that little bit of pause time where you can look at things and do them differently if you want or not do them at all. Choose something okay. else to do. Sure. And, and like, hey, Tanya, good to see you. There's a few, few of my regulars that are coming in here, so it's great to say hello to them. Tanya's from the UK, which is actually from Germany. Oh. She's popped okay. in. This is more the UK, Europe time slot and Aussies than the, our, our mates from Canada and the States. So, but it'll be great to see if we get a spread today. Um, look, rather than jumping straight into this, because I'm super excited about learning about Mercury in retrograde and, and revisiting, regurgitating, redesigning, etc. But can you tell people who don't know who you are, who you are? <laughs> like, okay, so what? I'm I'm a I'm a doctor of Chinese medicine, and I founded Yera Health Retreat on the Mornington Peninsula. I founded that 17 years ago, so I've been running retreats for 17 years, and the retreats are really powerful. People come away for five days up to. 14 days wow. um, and we do lots of work like re, you know setting intentions I, do, I use a lot of my Chinese medicine so I do a lot of um, reset acupuncture um, I've got my three books um, that I wrote um, so one of my books is called food for the body mind and spirit 
So I cook all the food from my book. Um, yeah. And then everyone gets started on the workbook, Alone But Never Lonely. And I still do this book once every two years um, because it's a, it's a workbook that you work through to basically change your life. And then there's a numerology book um, and a positive, positive message, message book. So they come along, they, we, we do a whole heap of stuff. We do, um, well, obviously the healthy cooking and healthy eating. Um, we do relook at their intentions and where they're going in life and what they want to change, what they feel they need to change. A lot of the time what they need to change is a lot of their um, uh, lifestyle and health because their health is very, has deteriorated because they haven't taken time to look after their health. So it's all about getting their health back on track. And then by day four, five, six, seven, eight, um, it's about resetting those intentions, looking at where they've, where they've, where they're at, how far they've come, and where they want to go now. Um, so it's a really good awakening period, and retreats are amazing. I mean, retreats are. I do a lot of retreats myself. Um, mine are very. Um, they're, they're not regimented, but I have a set plan of where I want the person to get from day one to day eight. I have a pretty set plan of what I want to get done what I want mm. to introduce them to, what I want them to embrace, what I want them to take home and continue doing. And it's very simple things. It's things like, you know, having a green smoothie per day, adding certain things into your um, diet to um, increase energy. Um, I studied Chinese medicine, but as well as that, I did my research in diet therapy. So, and I basically wanted to learn about diet because diet is amazing. And we can actually heal um, and feel better and heal and stop dis-ease um, through the food we eat and what what we do, our, our, our eating practices, Yeah, you know. I mean, I want to ask a few people out there, how many people actually sit down to have their breakfast, lunch yeah. and dinner? So we actually make it a ritual to sit and eat and talk so at my retreats there's no television there's no phones um because it gives us a chance to talk and to yeah. eat and to masticate and to chew your food yeah yeah, yeah exactly <laughs> i know that people don't recognize that there's a the, the quality of, of chewing starts the whole digestive system off there's your you know the, there's your acids to start breaking things down. And if you don't do that, you haven't started, you haven't formulated that first initiation of digestion. As well as that, it's a brain power. If you're just running and eating, the brain's not recognising, oh, we're eating. The food is lost. We need to give the brain a moment. You know, we need to put get the food ready so we start smelling it, our body and brain starts recognizing all oh, foods coming then mm. we actually sit and we look at it and talk about it and we talk about the ingredients and you know we're starting to salivate we're, we're getting our brain ready the brain needs a bit of time to click in and say oh we're eating now okay hunger centers we're going to nourish you now and then we start eating and then the brain actually feels better because it's receiving that nutrition but you know yeah. if you're running around doing a million things and chucking some food in your mouth you're not allowing the brain to recognize and this is why we've got the problem of obesity and problem of malnutrition like um and i have a lot of people come and they say oh but my diet's really really good i say okay so we need to we need to work on your yeah. eating practices yeah yeah are you just shoving food in your mouth in the car so, you know, a lot of my clients now, they, they text me and they're proud because they say, look where we're eating. We're eating under a tree during oh, their cool. work break. Yeah. How because cool. they're actually stopping, sitting, un sitting under a tree or sitting, you know, not in their car, just shoving food in their mouth for their brain to go, oh, what are we doing here? Are we working? Are we eating? Are we nourishing? So it's that sort of thing. Yeah, and, you know, there's some really good points that you said there because 
I have that conversation about nutritional medicine because nutritional medicine is A, it is a thing. B, I, if you sit there and go, I'm eating, I've bought all organic food, yet you're sitting down with an iPad flicking through the news, not engaged in, it, it can be the best food on the planet. But you're still not going to, to, to enjoy food like a goddess, we used to say. In, in your fact, you know, if you're a guy, clearly not goddess, but like a warrior, like you, know, you <laughs> want to have the power, you want to have the strength, you want to, you know, really sit there in that righteous space and 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 eat beautiful, beautifully prepared food. Tell me, what's this, what's your thoughts since post 2019 with the amount of stress and anxiety that people have got, and what's happening with their gut and their biomes? Yeah, that's, that's a really good point because what I do a lot of in clinic and on retreats is stress-induced irritable bowel syndrome. Um, I, I feel their pulses, I check their tongue and you wouldn't think that they had the irritability in the bowel or, or the, you know, what they classify irritable bowel syndrome. So there's this whole new thing of stress-induced irritable bowel syndrome and that's just by, you know, in Chinese medicine, if your energy is here and we're continually thinking, 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 the energy isn't where it's meant to be. Our energy needs to be in our gut. Yeah. That's, where the, that's where all the digestion takes place. Whereas what's happened with this pandemic, even, you know, we're all now in our heads. We're all in this fear, fear-driven mode where we're all freaking out, you know, what's going to happen next? I mean, we've got wars going on, we've got this going on, we've got that going on. So we're yeah. so in our head and worrying and stressing that now a lot of the irritable, irritable bowel syndrome is basically due to not enough energy being down there in the organs that need it because we're brain tired. We're brain tired. There's this new stuff coming up every single day and everyone wants to read now. Everyone's reading and on the internet, flicking through the iPad, like you said. Yeah. But we've become brain tired and there's way too much energy in here. So this is why I love my um, retreats because they bring back that happiness because yeah. we go back to, you know, let's do something happy. Let's get up in the morning, start with our affirmations, start off with our breath work. In Chinese medicine, it's called da qi. The food we eat is Gucci. So not Gucci like the brand, Gucci. <laughs> <laughs> Although I love Gucci. <laughs> I, was like, I was laughing with my clients. They always, like, they, they always say, oh, we love your Gucci scarf on TikTok because there's a, a TikTok video of me with a Gucci scarf. I say, yeah, I don't buy many bits, but I do like just a little bit, you know, yeah. like on a spoil day. Um, I like to go and spoil myself. Um, so we should, because that, you know, gets, so basically at the retreat, we do fun things. We get up in the morning and we all say, good morning. How many of us get up now and say, good morning? That starts yeah. the brain going like, yeah, it is a good morning. We yeah. woke up. We're breathing. Good morning. Yeah. Yeah. And so I, love I run around that. saying, good morning, good morning, because it is a good morning. We've all woken up. We're, we can all see, hear, breathe. So it is a good morning. And then we do like um, positive affirmations. These are so powerful, guys. We all need to start with positive affirmations. You know, I am in perfect health. I am in perfect health. I am in perfect health. And then you formulate simple affirmations that are going to work for you the universe doesn't understand these big complex affirmations it's got to be yeah. something simple and wonderful that, in, that uplifts you instantly by doing that and then of course some really nice healthy brekkie um you know to, to nurture you know it's our blood sugars levels are down so we um do some breath work some qigong um so mm -hmm. qigong is amazing it's um breathing using your breath to move energy around your body. So we do some Qigong and then we, and so already just those three basic things are increasing and giving you your dose, dopamine, oxytocin, serotonin, endorphins. 
So your brain starts recognizing, oh, this feels really good. This is great. You're giving me positive breath. You're giving me positive brain food with the affirmations. You're giving me really yummy food. Um, and then we go off for our beach walk and we do some more breathing down there and we do a lot of letting go stuff. And so all these simple practices, these simple practices start to reset us. Yeah, yeah. How would you give someone who doesn't understand how to set an affirmation? Is there Because there are a lot of people out there that go, Oh, I can't. I can't even think of an affirmation. I, I don't know what that means. I, I, my life is terrible. You know, how do you? What steps can you give people that might be listening today? So what I say is, we all have our not so good days. We never use the B word because nothing is, nothing is ever really. You know, it's it's not so good. So even in those situations, by just by us saying something positive our brain starts to recognize and starts following in that way so you know there might be a day where you wake up and you feel really low um or like you know a couple of days ago i got up and i was you know full of hay fever and i was like oh my god and then i i just set the affirmation i am in perfect health today and every other day so by saying it your brain starts to recognize and it starts feeling that it is you know, and then you start feeling better and then you drink more water and you do and you follow on with some um, healthy practice, like, you know, even just a bit of breath work or a little bit of a couple of poses of yoga or something. But an affirmation needs to be particular for you. People say, oh, Rob, can you write down a few affirmations? And I say, I think it's best if you come up with them and come up with them simply and say them to yourself. And then when you're saying to yourself, do they feel good or do you feel like a bit of a, you know, like, oh, actually, no, I don't, I don't feel good saying that. Like, um, you know, and there's some people that um, still have the problem of believing they are abundant. We're all born abundant. We're all born abundant. But there's certain yeah. people on a retreat that they still have, they don't feel comfortable saying I am abundant. I'm a miracle magnet. I'm a miracle magnet. So I, you know, I, I let it go for the first, second day. And then I say to them, what well, do you realize you're a miracle already? Like one millionth of that sperm chose to make you. Yeah. So you're a miracle already. And they go, oh, yeah. And I say to them, you don't have to say it right now. But I am a miracle magnet. I wake up and say that every morning because I am a miracle. One millionth of a sperm chose to make me. <laughs> like, that's, I find, and during bioscience, I found that so incredible that I kept going back to it. And I think my bioscience lecturer must have been thinking, why does he keep coming back to that? And why I, well, why I kept coming back to it was because I found it absolutely fascinating. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> And that's absolutely right. So um, and I, I find I, that so fascinating. And so people still have this resistance to being a mir for miracles to happen for them and for abundance to happen for them. So mm. I gently awaken them to that, like you know, by day three or four. Because you know, there's some blokes that come, and you can't just launch into all of this. You've got to yeah. gradually, you know. And there's a certain level of trust, like particularly with males particularly with males. And if there's any, if there's any males out there, no disrespect to any male, I'm just basically, um, you know, I, I think, um, yeah, males take that little bit more, you know, of, of the, the trust, you know, and, and, and it's, you know, pretty full on. People are putting their, putting the, their eight, the next eight days before a retreat into the hands of a specialist as myself that's been doing it for a, a long time. So, um, but I find, yeah, it, it takes a while for people um, to realise that abundance and miracles happen. They're happening all the time. So it takes a bit of time to launch into all of that. Um, yeah. And men tend to be a bit more data, like, for the, like the, they're more of a, an IQ versus EQ where women are very EQ. And this is a very big, broad statement, but I'm just talking about... That nurture, you know, nature you got it. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Yep. Yeah. So, 
it's more it's it, it's just more the the gender differences i mean you know there are gender differences without without being um you know too um yeah i mean they they definitely they definitely are yeah i know exactly now you hear people that it's about that self sabotage lack of of feeling like they're worthy is that kind of i don't believe that i can be there because i yeah, it might be that Protestant work ethic that that a lot of us have, where we work twenty four seven. Yeah, you know, I'm not allowed to give myself time to actually believe that I'm wonderful. And guys, yeah. self first is not selfish. I had these mothers come on on the retreats, and they're like, "Oh, I feel oh. so guilty being here because my kids." And I'm like, "You need time. You need this for you." to feel better so you can be a strong mother and be a strong wife. So, guys, self-first is not selfish. Yeah, well said, you know, Rob. Not only mothers, not only mothers, fathers as well. You know, fathers, and I really love it, I love it when the wives book a retreat for the husband, and this happens so many times. Yeah. This happens so many times. And, you know, the guys get there and they're like, oh, God, what, what has she booked me into? And then, you know, we make it, I make it fun. I, you know, show them, I say to them, you know, what, two, one or two days a week, why don't you just use this book, which is basic, it's basic, mm. make your wife and family the Mexican chili bean shepherd's pie. So I start getting them interested in doing things for health. Um, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I can't even get any in to cook anything, anything much more than the steak on the barbie. I'm going to have a look at that. <laughs> Just Guys, go. meat stays. I mean, I'm, I tried doing <laughs> um, being a vegan. It was very, very tough because I do love my, I love my scrambled eggs and I'm Italian. So, you know, oh. once a month or whatever, we like, I like to have just a little bit of, of um you know like the bolognese and stuff like that but um remember meat stays in the body for 22 days so yeah. just limit the amount of eat uh, limit the amount of meat you eat so just maybe have it i always say i always say to my clients and even on retreat well on the retreat you don't have any meat um because yeah. we're cleansing everything um uh and then I do like the the reset acupuncture. I do things like lymphatic drainage massage. I'm going to um, ask about that, yeah, because I think that's kind of cool. I really want to find out, give people some tips on on where they can be working to assist them. Well, apparently I was told that I'm one of like 14 specialists that does lymphatic drainage massage. So why don't people do it? Don't they teach it in courses anymore? Oh, no, we got massage course. That's weird. No, no, it's it's out there. MLD it's practitioners. Yeah, you know, there's, yeah, a no. certain, there's a certain technique for lymphatic drainage massage. There's a, there's a very yeah. um, uh, a certain technique. You know, you do the glands, but you don't do too much on the glands because basically you're massaging the glands and getting the nasties out. You don't want to do too much of that, but you just mm. facilitate the body gently to doing it. You do a little bit, and then you facilitate the body. To do the rest like you know with um with uh some water flushing so then we do like a day where we stop eating at 6 p.m and we don't we, we don't eat again till you know 11 a.m and then we do yeah. like the legs up the legs up on the wall which is really yeah. good to get everything flowing um but just just back i just want to backtrack a little bit back to when the wives book their husbands yeah and then by the end of the retreat, I've never, ever, ever had a bad experience where, because, uh, you know, retreats, um, you, you go through varying um, e emotional things, but everyone sometimes tries to keep their emotional stuff. But, you know, then we spend a lot of time together, particularly over an eight-day retreat, and slowly, mm -hmm. like either on a walk or at the beach, Things will slowly come up, and that those moments are just beautiful. Like I find those moments so beautiful. Yeah, yeah. You know, I've got like, a few friends of ours, and she just sent her husband to a retreat up here in Brisbane or Queensland. 
And he was exactly what you said, exactly what you said. Oh, you know, I'm not, I don't think I'm not that keen. And then he got home and he's like, oh, my God, it was the most amazing experience of my life. He said, I'm completely, now I do, I, I do like breath work or meditation in the morning. I walk like I just, yeah, it was, he was a different person when he came back. Beautiful. And still as a different person. He's super happy with it all. Yeah, and, and what I find is once they start letting go of a little bit of, you know, in Chinese medicine we look at it as the onion and you're peeling that onion, you're peeling that onion layer by layer. Um, and once, you know, even with, with the body work I do, like I'll do reset acupuncture, then I do um, ear acupuncture, which the mm -hmm. ear is amazing. The ear is absolutely amazing. So if you look at someone's ear, it's like a baby in, in utero. So yeah. I use a lot of um, um, reset acupuncture on the ear. Um, and then what I find is always day five of detoxing is large intestine. Well, we hold a lot of emotions in our bowel. When we're scared, we don't go to the toilet. When we're um, you know, when we're worried, we get constipated because our bowel holds. So by day five, I'm always like, oh, I'm, I'm waiting for, you know, like an emotional um, surfacing, like it's an emotional surfacing. And those moments are amazing because they share things, you know, it could be like, okay, so my last retreat, um, the person started talking about their time when they were overseas and how they had to walk with no shoes um, because they had no money. And so all this stuff, and it was on the beach and we just, just kept casually walking and talking and, you know, but, it, and then later on in the, um, in the treatment, he actually said, wow, I've never ever spoken about that. And I feel my gut feel better and it doesn't feel um, in, in, in knots. I can't remember exactly how he put it because he, he's got a bit of an accent um, in, in knots, the, the tightness in the tummy. And I thought, wow, how long have you been carrying that? And these are the amazing, that's just one example, but these are the mm. amazing things that start to bubble you know, up, come out, come out, mm. evoke, or, you know, um, mm. and they, they're just really beautiful moments for them and it's, Really nice for me to think, you know, just a, 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 a few treatments. This is, you know, around day four, day five. And then yeah. I like to do eight-day retreats because then, you know, we sort of have a bit of fun the, the last two days. It's not so, you know, because I've got to get a person from here to there and I've got to make sure that I have everything in place to be able to do that. So. It's um it's a big job, but it's a it's a really great job. That's why my retreats are never I never I never do a retreat more than five people. I just like to do I actually really like three people. Um I do one on ones as well. I love one on one retreats. Yeah, yeah, that's amazing. Uh, my sister lives down in Frankston, so like oh. I kind of close ish in that area. Like yeah like a little bit close-ish, but, you know, morning to Peninsula is amazing. Um, Rob, I want to ask about some of the stuff that people could use with their ears and stuff, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to throw over to the Q Academy and we're going yes. to have a, a, a brief um, um, promo for those guys uh, and then we'll come straight back and talk about all of the amazing things that you can tell people like DIYs after that. So let's see what we've got about Q Academy. Right. My name is Jade Afu. I studied uh, Cert 4 massage in 2014 and then went on to remedial in 2015. I was working in ASICS. I was retail, yeah, Lorna Jane. The real reason why I went and studied was I, my daughter was, um, she's been quite sick for about seven years on and off. She's had a couple of um, chronic conditions. So um, I found it hard working in a job and having to leave because my children are sick or I've got to go to hospital or there's just so many things going on. 
for me, I needed another option. I've been set up for about eight years now, um, working from home. Having a home business has been like such a blessing to my life. I, I don't think I could have done what I've done somewhere else, just with my own circumstances. My life's very busy, I've got three kids. Um, and this year has been a little bit different again because now I've got three kids playing sports every afternoon. Um, so I do try, if I can, work in between school hours. I feel like you can make it work to your advantage. So you can either work as hard as you want and be stressed and all the things, or you can make it flexible. Hey! Wow, that's awesome. Cute yeah. Academy. Yeah, they're really great guys. I worked for them years ago and I'm on two of their educational pathways for uh, uh, from the education of higher ed, the Q for higher ed. So that's pretty exciting. Anyway, um, if you're interested in doing a course to upskill yourselves, then I would always suggest that Q is a great place to play. That like I can't do it, guys. Do it. And yeah. do cupping. Cupping is absolutely amazing. Cupping and gua sha all um, massage therapists need to do cupping and gua sha. Cupping is amazing. It's amazing. I've got my there. Yeah. So yeah, you know, with with cupping, quite often we'll do slide cupping or just just sit it on a spot. If there's someone's got a dirty old trigger point in here, I'll do a little cup in that one space while I'm doing other things, and then come back, and it's generally eased off. But the most amazing thing, and I've had massage therapists come and do my retreat. And I put the cuffs on their stomach and they're like, wow, on the stomach. And I say, yes, you're getting lots of blood to the stomach area to get rid of all the poisons. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. And that's working with the, the TCM. Exactly. No, that makes sense. So, Rob, tell me, if I've got, if I've got uh, not that I am a smoker or um, I, uh, excessive drinker or obsessive compulsive, might be a little on that. Um, um, workaholic, um, can't sleep. What's what's some tips that we can give the people that are listening to us who go, wow, Rob, I can maybe do that. Those people who can't get to a retreat with you because they live somewhere else. I think with addiction, I mean, I help a lot of people with coffee addiction, alcohol addiction, cigarette, nicotine addiction. Um, so it's they don't have something else to love so i say to them those things are like something you love imagine it like something you love you've got to fall out of love with it so you need to add other things in that you love that yeah. give you that feeling it's almost like a love a love thing so you, you need to actually first start by falling out of love with that and incorporate enough stuff in that you do love the best thing is Qigong, like Qigong and breath work is mm. amazing because basically you're filling up, you're filling up, you're continually filling up, then you're releasing and letting go. But it's it's more the filling up, like, you know, yeah. your lungs feel great. Um, and I say, to, I, I say to a lot of, because, you know, sometimes I do have um, people come and do a retreat and they say, look, we're cutting down. We're gonna we're gonna limit down to three or four cigarettes a day during the retreat. I said, and look, I can't police that. My recommendation would be for these eight days, try not to. Well, after all that filling up of good air, good food, that um, all their all their herbal herbal teas and everything, they don't want to have a cigarette. Yeah. I love so day five, I say to them, why is it that you're not having a cigarette? And they say, well, one, we're feeling a lot better. I say, yep. So, and then I say to them, I'm getting you addicted to the feeling of feeling great. And they say, yeah. Mm. So it's getting addicted to the feeling of feeling great. You, you probably got friends like this or people out there have got friends like this. You know, when, when your mate, well, my mates, when they start their, their health regime and they start doing their running and waking up in the morning and, and eating their healthy stuff, they don't even want to go out anymore because it's like, okay, so you're not going to 
come out to the party and they're like, no, no, we're not going out to the party because we're not drinking, we're not smoking, we're not doing it. And I say to them, well, you can still come out and socialise, but they don't because they're yeah. addicted. They're addicted to that feeling of feeling great. Um, and then, you know, sometimes, it, it, and usually what I've found, particularly with, even with clients and friends, it takes like a life, a life stressor to knock mm. them off the wagon. And generally yeah. it's, you know, they, they have a struggle at work. They have a struggle in their relationship. They have a struggle in their family. Um, and then they fall off the wagon. But I think the best DIY, do, uh, D, DIY, do it, do, do it yourself at, um, at, um, home would be the DIY that I would recommend is just incorporate two or three things that you absolutely love. Like it's easy for me to say, why don't you meditate every morning? I like meditation. Meditation isn't for everyone. Some people, yeah. it drives them absolutely batty. Some people are like, I'm not going to sit there and meditate. And I'm like, okay, you don't have to. What else yeah. would you like to do? I want to get up and go for a run. Okay, well, there you go. Are you going to love that? Yes, I'm going to love that. And they meditate when they're running quite often because they, their minds are still. And, yeah. The other big one is swimming. Lots of people say, I just want to get to a pool. I want to swim. And I said, well, what's stopping you? Do it. Get up an hour earlier. Get to the pool. Do your swim. And yeah. see how you feel afterwards, but don't have a cigarette or any any, any sugar or coffee because a lot of people come because they drink way too much coffee. So my retreats, there's usually a lot that come because they want to get off caffeine, yeah. which is a big big thing, you know, because that they'll work in the city and they'll get you know a latte before they go to work. So I said, okay, start by going to the pool. Don't have your latte. See how you feel. Whether you want your latte after the swim. Most of the times they don't because yeah. they're oxygenated. Their body feels great. They've energized. They don't need that coffee to energize. So, um, and then I put them on, you know, cert certain tinctures and stuff like that to help them as well. Um, mm. So I think do it yourself is find a few other things that you really love doing. Yeah. Yeah, you the, um, fall out of love with the things that are bad for you, and fall in love with things that that suit you. And you yeah. know, meditation isn't for everyone. And I've, I've found that over the seventeen years of running retreats, for some people, meditation is laying in shavasana, looking up at the sky. And I said to them, "Great, while mm. we're doing our meditation and our chants, you do what feels comfortable." Others will say, "Rob." I feel fidgety sitting during the meditation. Can I just walk along the beach? I say, of course you can. Yes, yeah. that's great. Yeah. You know where we are. We're going to be sitting here doing our meditation. If you want to go for a little walk, you know where we are. You come back and you join in whenever you feel comfortable. So um, it's about finding what works for you. And we are complex, complex yeah. individuals. Yeah, yeah. And I read somewhere that you can't, you, like you can't break, like you, you can't remove a habit, you've got to replace a habit. And that's what you're saying here. Replacement versus removal because it just doesn't work otherwise. For Like you saying you got to love, fall in love. Like for an example, habitually getting up in the morning and having a cup of coffee, and even though it's just black, it's still, it's the habit of. I've recently changed to having a cup of tea and go, I love, and the process of I bought a new kettle, I put it on the stove, I wait yeah. for the water to whistle. It's creating a new neural pathway and sitting down and enjoying that cup of tea. And and I don't feel like a coffee for, like, uh, unless I put my brain into saying, oh, I think I'm going to make myself have a cup of coffee. Otherwise, your brain doesn't, doesn't need it. Because there's a little bit of, of caffeine with the tannins got more of a kick in it than um than caffeine most times. <laughs> I read that statistic somewhere. Yeah, but some I mean coffee coffee addiction is one of the big ones at the moment and sugar addiction. Like people are eating way too much sugar. And guys, oh. sugar's so okay, we all know sugar's bad for you, but sugar 
is what triggers a lot of the nasty diseases. It causes inflammation. It causes all sorts of complications in the gut. Sugar and caffeine. Um, yeah. Limit it. Limit it. Um, and that. Stop that. Stop your phone because every time you click on that, it's the same sensa sensory spot. It's your dopamine. Like you're trying to get a fix, trying to get a fix. These things should be put away. Um, even emails, turn them on in the morning and then turn your emails off, like shut yes. the program down because you keep going back to it and back to it and you're losing the losing you. Like we, we lose us in the process of, of being in this maze of advertisements and, and buy this and do that. It's like the world's crazy. What I say on the retreats is we're here for less than a hundred years. Do you want to spend one third of that time on your phone? No. 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 If you don't get it. Definitely anything not. So it's about replacing. And yeah, we do need to replace a habit. I mean, kicking a habit is really, really difficult. And I, I totally get that. I totally, totally get that. I mean, I haven't had a drink for 30 months. I chose I chose that because it used to make me feel quite lethargic like i would only have I'd, I'd have like a couple of drinks on a wednesday friday and maybe saturday two or three drinks but i used to feel so tired and i thought why am i going out and having a drink with friends when i don't need it and i don't yeah. <laughs> so 30 months but in saying that the evening like particularly on the Wednesday when we caught up with friends. So what we do now is we make sure that we do something fun. Like, you know, I'll cook something and we'll take it to the to the park and we'll sit and we'll have a nice meal. Um, I'll cook, you know, I'll do I'll do some cooking. My friends will still drink and, and that's fine. But I just thought, so, okay, so where I'm trying to go with this is recognise what you're doing. It's like with people that smoke. They're like, oh, I get really lightheaded after a cigarette and I feel a bit faint. And I'm like, then why are you doing it? So you need yeah. to recognize, is what you're doing feeling good or not feeling good? A lot of the times it's not feeling good. For me, even those three drinks on a Wednesday, Friday and Saturday were making me feel quite not, you know, quite lethargic. And then all I wanted to do was go to bed. Whereas now I can still go out drink my cranberry juice or soda water and still yeah. have heaps of energy. Like even now it's nearly nine o'clock and I'm full of energy. Whereas um, if I'd had like a glass of wine or something like that, it makes you feel so sluggish and tired. And acidy, guys, if like, especially wine, especially white wine. I want like next time you have a glass of wine, I want you to, to come into yourself and feel at your stomach. Feel it. Feel it. Actually, put your hand in that space and hear because you can feel the acid, and it's like it is just chewing you up. Like, it's it, you're right, Rob, it's all inflammatory. Yeah, it is. It's inflammatory, it's full of sugar, alcohol's full of sugar. And you know, I've done a lot, a lot of research, particularly over this, this pandemic thing. Yeah. Um, you know, and I, I wanted to learn a lot more about certain dietary things, and I mean. Alcohol, what it does, and sugar is what it does. Okay, in saying this, if you enjoy having a few drinks, I'm not preaching to you and saying, don't drink, don't do this, don't do that. Because I think some people really enjoy it. Like I know my dad. My dad had his 88th birthday um, yesterday. And he Happy only birthday. has, he only has one glass of red wine at lunch and one glass at dinner. So he always says to me, Gee, Rob, it's really good that you've just not having anything at all. I said, well, Dad, I always only used to have about three glasses um, and it didn't feel good. So if it doesn't feel good, you don't you do not do it. Like, you know, I think it's what you say. Go, listen to your body. Mm. Listen to what it's doing. Does it feel good? Yeah, it feels good. It makes me feel a little, you know, makes me relax a little. Okay, that feels great. Um, so... It's about recognising what feels good and what doesn't feel good. And I know for me, it just didn't feel good. Like it didn't feel good. Um, and so I 
I haven't, yeah, had it, had any for 30 months. Well done. We had, when I was doing my my um, myotherapy, my musculoskeletal degree, we had a, one of the teachers there who said that for, for uh, cluster headaches, a glass of wine, we're, like, we're talking about 75 mils, guys, not, uh, you know, those great big things that people get now, uh, because it's a vasodilator and quite often a cluster headaches are because it's constrictions up through here. And so, you know, 75 mils of wine just may be enough to uh, actually cut the headache down. So there, there's, you know, the, the Romans drank it, the Greeks drank yeah. it. There's, you know, there's, there's efficacy in moderation when yes. there's bits and pieces, like it's for a celebration, it's for an event. It's not because it's Monday night I'm going to hook into a carton of stubbies. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but you know that that's a big problem when people come to retreats. They're like, oh, you know, so uh, they like to have their certain. A, a lot of people like to have, you know, like it's almost like a reward thing. They finish off the day and they feel like their brain needs to be rewarded, and so I get them into thinking of other things they can reward themselves with. You know, like um, two of the guys that just recently did a retreat, they. They said, we're going to go for a swim. They, they live in um, Bayside, so they live right near the beach. So they started doing, instead of both of them catching up and having a drink, they started doing swims in the bay. Wow. Summer, winter, autumn, spring, it didn't matter. And I said to them, wow, okay. That got them off the booze. That yeah. got them off the booze. Because they, they said, oh, we feel so fantastic. We get out there, we do our swim. We don't even think about alcohol. Um, and then I think they go like and, and have a meal or whatever. Um, I said, that's awesome. <laughs> I mean, I didn't do that. I didn't, I didn't substitute it with, um, with I, I, I did a lot of hot yoga, um, but they substituted grog for swimming yeah. in the bay every single yeah. night after work. So that, that works for them. And they're, they're, still, they're, still, they're still alcohol free. Yeah. Isn't that incredible? That's such a good story because we need to, as you said, find something that you love and, and replace it with that. And you're right about oxygenation, getting that breath in, really, a diaphragmatic breath, not these big fat scalenes that are working here, helping them to take in gorgeous breath. Tell me, what do you put in that smoothie in the morning? Is there is there something you'd rec like, Obviously, it's to alkaline the body, but is there anything you'd tell the people out there? So. Every morning, a, a really good a really good smoothie is just make your own. So you basically just put a really good um, muesli. So I put a cup of muesli into the into the blender. I put alice, which is fantastic because you're getting your good fats, linseed, sunflower, almond. I put yeah. some coconut. If I've got fresh coconut, I'll chuck that in there because you need the good oils, the good the good fats to, to start you know your brain going and everything. Um, if you haven't got that, you can put a little bit of coconut oil. Then I put like, you know, um, half a kiwi with the skin on it. Um, I throw a pear in there. I like to use banana sparingly just because it's so high in sugar. But bananas are fantastic. You can put a banana in there. So I like to have that vitamized with some coconut milk or oat milk. So that instantly starts giving your brain food, good yep. fat. It's the good fats, you know, the coconut fats and the good fats. And then your brain starts going, oh, I feel good now because you've given me a bit of sugar, a bit of, a, you know, a bit of good fats, um, yeah. obviously a bit of carbohydrate um, to get the, the glycogen and brain function going. And then I always recommend, always, at least one to two green smoothies every single day. Okay. So... In a green smoothie, I put in broccoli, I put zucchini, I put cucumber, I put celery, I put a bit of apple, not too much apple because that, that's also got a lot of sugar, um, a little bit of kiwi fruit, I put a little bit of um, pear, and then I just put coconut water. Coconut water is amazing. Coconut product is amazing, guys. Lowers your cholesterol very good for your heart, very good for your blood, very good for immunity. So I recommend two green smoothies every day. 
now. The good thing is, on days that you are really, really busy and you can't fit many meals in, at least you know you started off with a really good high-powered breakfast. You've got mm. vegetables and fruit with your green smoothie. So in between, you can just have like, you know, you, you can have like a rice noodle or if you if you work, um, you know, in the city, get a quick rice noodle um, uh, that's easy to eat. So, yeah. But even so, you've started off with three things that you can do that are good for you and your health and your body that are so easy. And, you know, the green yeah. smoothies, just whiz them up and just chuck them in two jars, jars yeah. with the screw lid. Yeah, the mason jars, I think they call them. Yeah. So you don't put spirulina or corella or any of those things that make it taste, yeah. No, no. And then it's really good to have things like um, – Licorice tea, licorice root tea is amazing because it's good for the blood, it's good for the kidneys, it's good for energy. Peppermint tea is absolutely amazing. It's a, it's, it, it keeps you uplifted. It's very good for mind clearing. Peppermint tea, um, a bit of rhubos tea for the blood, especially. Um, what does rhubos do? I've, I've seen my mum used to drink rhubos tea. Rhubos is amazing for immunity. It's so good for immunity and blood. Okay. Wow. There, and, yeah. and blood cleansing as well. The other one that's really, really wonderful is the oolong, oolong tea, because that, that's flushing. But, you know, if you're at work, you don't want too much oolong tea, otherwise you're going to be like, it's, that's almost like a, a semi-detox. Oh, so <laughs> not before bed, right? No, no. So have it like a good time that I have it, um, you know, so I've had a little bit of um, oolong earlier. So I have it like between three and four. Mm -hmm. um, and then, you know, four hours later, you get a really good um, cleanse, you know, uh, urinary cleanse and bowel motion cleanse. And then, you know, it doesn't interrupt your sleep. Because that's the other thing I want to speak about, guys. And this is one of the things, this is one of the things that causes the most dis-ease. And that is sleep. We need adequate amounts of sleep. Yeah. So we need to work, rest, and play. They're the three things we've got to get into balance. So on retreats, I help people with this. And so they say, oh, but when we, get, when we lay down, we've got to sit on our phone to sort of get our mind off the day. And I say to them, well, no, breathing's another good way of doing that. The four, mm -hmm. eight, seven breathing. Breathing in for four, holding for eight, out for seven. So I bring them back to doing the breathing because sleep is so important, so important for, for lowering dis-ease. Yeah, yeah. So we want our body to be in ease. All our systems in our body need to be in ease. So on retreats, I'm amazed the amount of people that don't sleep properly. And a lot of people are going on three or four hours a day. Yeah. What's that, bro? It, you know, women who have – well, I mean, I'm only talking about women because I talk to a lot of them. They'll, they'll say, I wake up at 2 or 3 and I can't fall back to sleep. So will that 4, 8, 7 help or is it what else could they do at 3 o'clock in the morning where they've got monkey mind? The other thing I find, we've got the thymus gland which sits behind the sternum. There's a lot of acupuncture points around that area as well. So a really good thing to do is tap gently on your thymus gland. Okay. So because it lowers it, it, like don't bash it. It, 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 you know, don't bash on it. It's the thymus gland. So, you know, like when a gorilla goes to battle, they go, whoa, because it lowers anxiety, lowers their fear. And the yeah. thymus gland, it sits behind the sternum. So you've got the sternum here, which is the, the chest bone. That's the chest bone. Mm -hmm. And, so the thymus sits pretty much midway, so pretty much nipple level. So we're, yeah, nipple level. And so behind there sits the thymus, so gently tapping. Because I sometimes suffer with insomnia as well, especially around this full moon period. Um, yeah. So I just lay there. I do my four, eight, seven breathing, and then I just tap gently. I tap gently on the thymus. 
Yeah. Just okay. really, really gentle. So what about pituitary or pineal or any of those? Because some people talk about working through those glands. Yep, I like the third eye. I usually place I usually place my amethyst and I place that on my third eye. As well as that, I love putting rose quartz over your heart chakra. Yeah. Which is really good. Yeah. The wow. other thing that the other thing that really works is holding pieces of rose quartz in your hands and squeezing and releasing. Squeezing and releasing. Squeeze, so, release. What does the rose gold? Uh, rose gold. Can I have rose gold? No, rose quartz. What does that? How does that? Um, what? Rose why? Quartz is really good. Rose quartz is a really good, and it's a good time to put all your rose quartz out so that it gets cleansed by the full moon. But rose quartz is a is a harmonizing stone. It's a beautiful oh. harmonizing stone. So it harmonizes high blood pressure, um, blood flow, helps helps with blood flow, as well as that mind easing. And amethyst on the, the third eye or the pineal gland is really good as well because amethyst is an amazing, beautiful stone. It's a healing stone. But mm. the rose quartz is very good in harmonizing central nervous system. Okay. That's cool to know. That's really cool to know because a lot of people, that's where we're going right now. Our, our central nervous systems are crap, overwhelmed, abused, and we need ways to calm them down. So, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Full moon. All, all of your all of your crystals out in the full moon. Yeah. Yeah. I'm gonna put them all. I've, I've just ran them under. I've ran them all under um um cold water. So now I'm just gonna put them out. I had them out earlier, but I don't like leaving them in the sun for too long. So I'll put them all out under the full moon tonight. Wow. Yes, I've got like a venturine, my jade. I've got um. Yeah, rhodonite. I've got um, carnelian, which is beautiful. It's a beautiful stone, carnelian. Very good for the second chakra, so creativity and sexual chakra. So I use this a lot for fertility retreats. Um, yeah, it's beautiful, the carnelian. Pretty. Um, but, yeah. It's orange. Uh, oh, which is your second chakra? Red, orange, yellow. Second, uh, second chakra, yep. Yeah. So get all of your stones. Oh, the beautiful one that I love is my mum's ruby ring. I put my mum's ruby ring out as well. Oh, well, I've got my mum's. I've got her ruby ring. It's oh, wrong way. Her ruby wow. ring. Wow. They're yeah. connecting, Paula. Look at that. <laughs> Shazam. Do you remember the movie? Wow. The... How funny is that? I tell you what, this. This ring of hers is so full on. Like I'll I'll put it on and I'll just have this immense like feeling of knowing of knowing. It's just an amazing, it's just a beautiful stone. But I'll, I'll put this out as well to cleanse the ruby stone. Okay, yeah. So I'll I'll do that. What about diamonds? The same. Diamonds Get as well. Put everything. Yes, I've got my dad's. My dad gave me his tie pin, and that's got diamonds on it. So I pop that. You know, just put it. Just put it out like I've got a little courtyard. So if you don't want to put certain jewellery out, like if, if you live in an apartment or something, um, you can just put it even on the ledge of your of your window. Yeah. On the window ledge. Yeah. How does the moon do it? Like what's the what's the I know we've only got <laughs> a minute amazing, left. Amazing, amazing properties. Like I even put my face roller. I love my face roller. A lot of people have got jade face rollers. Yeah. This is the other thing that I kept out because I wanted to tell people I do a lot of cosmetic acupuncture. I learned cosmetic acupuncture during Chinese medicine. So I learned it so because, you know, when, yeah. I, when I did my course, I was like 18, 19, 20, 21. And we're all a yeah. bit vain at 18, 19, 20, 21. <laughs> now I couldn't care less. I don't care how many wrinkles are on my face. But, you know, you're, you're a little bit vain when you're, when you're studying it. You know, you've got to look perfect. And um, so I did, but cosmetic acupuncture is amazing. So my hay fever, I've been doing acupuncture on my face. I've got my needles here to do my acupuncture after. Yeah. Um, I acupuncture my face 
and my hay fever just goes because I don't take Zyrtec or whatever, whatever those other medications are. I just acupuncture my face. But the roller, guys, is amazing because it gets blood and chi to the area, to like your okay. face area. Okay. And then you can, you know, do. Now, on the face, there are so many sensory nervous system acupressure points. So you're stimulating all those points, which is amazing. Yeah. You, you, you're bringing a lot of chi and blood to the to the face area and it's you know and you get a you get a bonus as well you you your skin looks great <laughs> we need that i mean like because we're always hiding under fluorescent lights etc cetera, etc cetera. yeah tanya's just said thanks for get she, thanks for the reminder she's going to get her stones out right now as well so and i'll dig mine out and pop them somewhere i mean yeah, yeah. i've got a i've got a whole i've got a whole heap I've got these. Oh, and I've got this one. I love this one. My selenite. Guys, all of you need to get a selenite. Wow. Look at that. What does selenite? Wow, indeed. This is amazing. I use this in clinic as well. Um, and what it does is it cleanses people's aura. So when people come in and they're like, oh, like this, oh, it's been such a busy day at work. And I've done this and I've done this. And the, the energy is like, before I even start doing a treatment, it, I just need to bring the, the aura. I need to just harmonize the aura. Selenite is beautiful for that, guys. Yeah, wow. Yeah, that's incredible. Looks selenite. Selenite. S-E-L-E-N-I-T-E. -E -E. Selenite. We'll put that down in the in the, the Facebook thread so that people can write that write that down. S E L E N I T E. I like yes, the little brass. Yes, honestly, Paula, even you in clinic, like just get a little thing that you can put it on. I mean, you can yep. tell the person. You can tell the person when they come in. You can say, "I'm just gonna, you know, use some selenite." Um, you can get a selenite wand. But my selenite wands keep breaking. I don't know why. I think the energy is a bit too strong. <laughs> yeah. Um, this is a this is a black onyx wand, which is really really good. It's for, great for kidneys, but as well as that for protection. But selenite is amazing because, as you say, in this in these times where there's a lot of stuff going on, our nervous system is all a little bit. Um, yeah, it's just. Everyone's nervous system's a bit almost like fractured. It's almost fractured. So this just helps um, um, harmonize. It, it's if funny. I don't, I don't have very much of anything, but every now and then I do pull out my my gorgeous bowl and, and come Love around it. with it. Yeah, it just makes me, how, how, how are you doing this? Are you giving it to them or are you having them? Uh, I think Tanya's just asked how are you doing that. You're you're actually just how are you clearing or calming them down with the selenite? Sometimes a... Tanya, sometimes Tanya, I don't say anything at all. Other other times, I just um I just go a little bit over their bodies when they're lying there and go over their bodies. I do I do it on myself as well before I go into clinic. Um, I, I just yeah, just do a bit of a. Just do a bit of a um, just just, just a, a few times up and up and around, you know, around the arms, over, and, and you just waft it around. I mean, it's easier with a wand, but my selenite wands keep breaking, so I've just gone with, with a sphere now. So you can actually, uh, Tanya, you can put them down on the table and and just as your first move, just go around to like just kind of do that in that space. It's funny. Last month we talked on. Um, aromatherapy oils and the qualities of how that helps so this has been a lovely segue through but i'm mindful that we've gone over the hour of our oh, hour not i didn't even realize i know i didn't realize because <laughs> it's so much fun i know well i would love to have you back at some stage to talk more yeah, about yeah. Oils yeah, and well, all sorts of things we're fine now we've worked out the link sorry apologies guys for the delay um the initial link, I kept pressing it, but then what I thought, I thought, you know what? I'm going to switch my phone on and off, and that worked. 
So yeah. the link, I kept pressing it and it wasn't, um, and I also, I, I tried the link, I tried the link on the weekend because I thought I need to try the link and make sure it works okay on my phone and it worked. That's why I was like, why isn't it working at quarter tape? But anyway, it, it, it worked, it worked out. So, but apologies for being a little bit late. That's right. You've given us lovely content. We've gone a little bit over it now. So we've kind of, everything's beautiful. And Rob, thank you so much for, for giving us some of your pearls of wisdom. And guys, if you're interested in, in, if you're in Australia or New Zealand, or you don't mind flying over here, check out Yura Health Retreat, Y-E-R-A. So Yankee Echo Romeo Alpha Health Retreat. And even just having a look at the books, maybe you, they can send them out for postage, et cetera, et cetera, or get them in PDF form, I guess. Yeah, so yeah, yeah, you can get them on PDF form. So if you go, if you, if you go to the website, guys, www.yearahealth.com.au, on the left-hand side, you'll see Yearah Bookstore and you'll see my three, my three books. And I want to do a little giveaway. So anyone who purchases my three healing ebooks will get my two novels absolutely free as well so i'll mail all five books to you for the price of the three healing books nice wow well i'm keen on getting ian to understand how to cook green nachos that sounds like a fully fully fun thing to do for him <laughs> and, and i'm going to be playing in the book space so th that's his that's father's day it's belated but it'll be or an early christmas gift <laughs> But well, thank you so much, and I'm going to grab you and uh, like stick around after so I can say goodbye properly. Um, thank you, everybody who's showed up and and been asking questions. Don't forget, this is going to be in on Rob's um, website, like on his his pages. It'll be on on my pages for a while, and uh, they'll be up in the YMS page for a while. Then they'll then it'll go back into the massage mentor mastership page, which is my special group where I try to nurture people up through their education experience. Awesome. So um, not that I plug that too much when I'm doing this because it's all about everybody else. So thanks so much for coming, Rob. Everybody, Thank you. I'm not sure what we're doing next month, but I'll let you know between now and then. But, yes. Uh, and thank, th thank you, thank you, viewers, and um, peace and light to each and every one of you. Thank you for, for um, joining us and listening yes. to Paula and I. Thanks, Titch. Thanks, Yvonne. Thanks, Christine. Thanks, everybody. See you later.